Imagine yourself floating in the infinite darkness of space with the immense, shimmering band of the Milky Way stretching out above you. But when you look through the visor of your helmet, you are surprised to realize that there are no stars in space. All the countless points of light that turn the night sky on Earth into a sparkling sea have disappeared. But surely the stars should be even easier to see in space than on Earth. Why can't we see the stars in the boundless darkness of space? This fascinating question leads us to fundamental aspects of astrophysics, human perception, and photography. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins are now celebrated heroes of space travel. They were some of the first people ever to experience the paradox of the missing stars in space. If we look at the famous pictures of the Apollo 11 mission, which was the first space mission to land on the moon, the absence of stars only becomes apparent at second glance. Normally, everyone was spellbound by the astronauts in their gleaming white suits and what was happening on the surface of the moon. One of these iconic images shows Buzz Aldrin standing proudly next to the American flag on the lunar surface. But for all the splendor of this historic moment, one crucial element is missing, the stars. In the late 1960s, hardly anyone noticed this at first. It was only later, when doubts arose about the overall authenticity of the moon landing, that the missing stars became the center of speculation. Another famous photo from the Apollo missions shows the legendary small step for a man, Neil Armstrong's first footprint on the moon. The texture of the lunar dust, captured in the soft light of the sun, is shown with breathtaking clarity. But even here, the starry sky is conspicuously absent. This absence of stars in the images of the Apollo missions can be explained quite simply, and yet the phenomenon of the deep black universe is a mystery that hides complex mechanisms of light, reflection, and human perception. A trick of our perception? Who would have thought that what we see, or don't see, in space depends so much on our perception and our eyes? The Apollo images are by no means the only evidence of the universe without stars. Everyone who has been into space is familiar with the effect of the pitch black sky. Since the 1950s, around 600 people have traveled into space and all of them have experienced the phenomenon of missing stars. When launching a rocket at night, astronauts would initially still see stars when looking out of the hatches of their vehicle. This is because they are still within the Earth's dense atmosphere where light from stars and other celestial bodies is visible. As the rocket ascends and the atmosphere thins, the view of the stars is initially maintained, as the vacuum of space does not scatter or absorb light as the atmosphere does. From an altitude of around 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, the conditions for observing the stars slowly change. At this altitude lies the Kármán line, which is often regarded as the boundary to space. In this region and beyond, the atmosphere becomes extremely thin and the rocket enters space proper. Here the sky becomes even darker and the stars can be seen even more clearly for a short time as the view is not clouded by atmospheric scattering. In the complete darkness of space, away from the light pollution and atmospheric effects of the Earth, the astronauts should experience a spectacular panorama of the night sky that we cannot see on the Earth's surface. This is partly true. As long as it is dark, astronauts see stars in space. However, the intensity of this view changes drastically as soon as the light of the sun comes into play. When astronauts are exposed directly to the sun or to highly reflective sunlight, for example, from the surface of the Earth or the station itself, their eyes adapt to this brightness and their pupils constrict. The stars then disappear and the sky is bathed in a uniform black and the relatively faint light of the stars is no longer visible in space. This only changes again when the strong solar radiation diminishes, for example in the shadow of the Earth. Then the eyes adapt to the darkness and slowly stars can be seen again. Astronauts on the ISS experience this phenomenon several times a day, whenever the International Space Station enters and leaves the Earth's shadow. Thanks to this amazing fact, we can see that our eyes have evolved for the conditions on Earth. Our reactions to light and darkness pupil closure mechanisms and other visual functions are perfectly adapted to the conditions on Earth and its light conditions. In space, eyes face unfamiliar challenges as soon as they try to penetrate the immeasurable darkness of space. This may also explain why astonishingly often astronauts on the ISS experience eye problems when they return to Earth. The greatly altered lighting conditions on the space station, the large amount of artificial light, 
and the constant changes to the shutter mechanisms probably contribute to this. The brain constantly experiences discrepancies between the usual expectation of a visual impression under Earth conditions and the unfamiliar environment of the universe. But it's not only human eyes that have to contend with deficits in space. Camera systems also work very differently than on Earth. Space photography, not so easy. Why does the starry sky in space remain hidden from the eyes of cameras? The answer to this question takes us on a fascinating journey through space and time, technology, and science. We have already become acquainted with this phenomenon through the famous images from the Apollo 11 mission. The images showing Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon are historical documents of human achievement, but unfortunately, we can't see any stars. We can already give it away. The reason for this lies not in a fake of the entire mission, but in the fundamentals of photography itself. In this case, the mystery lies in the exposure, aperture, and ISO settings. Cameras capture light using a combination of these three basic settings, whether on Earth or in space. The aperture controls how much light falls through the lens onto the sensor or film. An open aperture lets in a lot of light and is ideal for dark environments, while a closed aperture limits the light in bright environments. The shutter speed determines how long the sensor is exposed to light. A slower shutter speed captures more light and is used for night photography on Earth. If you want to photograph stars at night, you need a slow shutter speed. The ISO setting amplifies the signal from the sensor, which can be helpful in low light, but also increases image noise. On the surface of the moon, the astronauts were in the darkness of space, but the sun shines unchecked on the moon during the day. The astronauts and their equipment were exposed to extreme and direct sunlight. Due to the bright environment, good images taken on the moon require a closed aperture and a fast shutter speed to avoid overexposing the images. These settings were optimal for capturing the details of the lunar surface and equipment, but allowed too little light through from the distant and relatively faint stars. The ISO values also had to be kept low to ensure image quality and avoid overexposure. This gave the photographers the choice of taking pictures that showed sharp details on the surface or those that showed the background more clearly and therefore also the stars. For images in which stars and astronauts are visible on the moon, Long exposure times would have been necessary, but this would have overexposed the bright lunar surface. Any movement, whether by astronauts or the camera, would have resulted in blurring with such long exposure times. Only modern techniques such as HDR photography or the use of neutral density filters could help, but these options were not available at the time of the Apollo missions. As perfect photography was not the main focus of the Apollo missions, the images remained without a starry sky. However, we can certainly look forward to seeing what the first new images of the moon will look like when the astronauts on the Artemis mission set foot on the lunar surface again in a few years' time. Things have changed from the Apollo mission to the ISS. We don't have to wait until the next moon landing to see fantastic photos from space. Technology has developed significantly since the first steps on the moon. While the astronauts on the Apollo missions were still equipped with relatively simple cameras, astronauts today have state-of-the-art digital cameras and can even use their smartphones to take pictures in space. Thanks to these possibilities and other instruments, we can capture the universe in a way that was previously impossible. On the ISS, in addition to the astronauts' private and official cameras, there are numerous windows and external cameras. Space fans and the curious can follow everything that is happening around the ISS online, and those who switch on the live stream can also follow the phenomenon of dark space and the appearance of stars as they pass into and out of the Earth's shadow. While the ISS is on the sunlit side of the Earth, the extremely bright background of daylight severely limits the visibility of the stars. Since we have live streams and online diaries from astronauts and cosmonauts, we not only see space with unprecedented clarity, but also our Earth. Astronauts or the organizations on whose behalf they are on the ISS publish wonderful pictures of our blue planet, detailed images of phenomena such as auroras and city lights at night. Time-lapse images of the universe allow us to participate in the movement of stars and other celestial bodies. With the development of specialized camera systems mounted on satellites and space telescopes, 
our ability to look deeper into the cosmos and image and explore objects in distant galaxies has become much better. Thanks to space telescopes like Hubble, we have seen the splendor of the cosmos in sharp focus and color for the first time. The James Webb Space Telescope tops this ingenuity once again, and we can see even further, even sharper, and even more colorful. Euclid, on the other hand, NASA's new space telescope, is capable of imaging more stars at once than any other telescope before it. A lot of time has passed from the first grainy black and white images of the moon's surface to the breathtaking color images of Earth from space and the star panoramas that Euclid provides us with. Rovers like Perseverance and Curiosity send us detailed, high-resolution images of the surface of Mars every day. Click the subscribe button now and stay tuned for all new videos.